What is up, booktube? It's Monty, and today I'm here to talk about Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, book one, The Sword of Summer by Rick Riordan. If you don't know, the Magnus Chase books are a spinoff series of the Percy Jackson books, which, you know, it should have crossed my mind, Magnus Chase, Annabeth Chase, but it honestly did not even occur to me until I was reading Magnus Chase and he was like, my cousin Annabeth. And I was like, Annabeth, Annabeth. <laughs> but Magnus Chase chronicles the life of 16 year old Magnus Chase, um, who was a homeless teenager in Boston who is living a regular life as one does in a Rick Riordan novel before discovering, you know, he has godly parents. And, you know, in a Rick Riordan novel, once you find out you have godly parents, then your whole life is turned upside down. Chaos ensues. And quests aplenty. <laughs> and uh, uh, Magnus Chase, the Gods of Asgard, book one, The Sword of Summer, is no different. I think that it's interesting in that this is a book where the protagonist is already 16 years old. When we started off with Percy, he was like, what? 12 I think in this book and we got to see Percy grow up and then the Heroes of Olympus he was older and I think in the Kane Chronicles they were similar age to this one I haven't read the Kane Chronicles yet but here we get to stop we, we just jump right into Magnus being 16 and in a lot of ways I wasn't a huge fan of Magnus being 16 because it did read young Magnus Chase is still <laughs> shelved in the middle grade section because it is written as a middle grade novel and it, it it is a little disorientating. I think that in some ways the Heroes of Olympus did feel more elevated than I remember when I was reading the Percy Jackson books but I was also reading the Percy Jackson books when I was like a literal child and so like I don't really think I was thinking about how old Percy was. Um, it's weird. It's weird. It's I don't think that Magnus Chase reads like a teenager. I don't know if that's because I've spent all year reading like 50 some odd young adult novels where 16 year olds are out here wreaking havoc and like doing things that I, I guess 16 year olds shouldn't do. And I guess in some ways Magnus Chase is like a, a more innocent version of that. And I guess I should appreciate that. But at times I was kind of like, Rick, I don't like this. Which could be you know not really a fair criticism because it it is it's it's a middle grade book targeted at middle grade children and I'm obviously not a middle grade child and so when I was sitting down to actually write my review I took that into consideration but let's get into let's go let's let's circle back we're going to go back and we're going to talk about the plot of this book as i said this is a spin-off series of the Percy Jackson series and like i said also, I haven't read the Kane Chronicles. I know there are like short stories and novellas where Percy and Annabeth interact with the Kane siblings, but because I haven't read the Kane Chronicles, I don't really know how in involved they are in the world. But Magnus being Annabeth's cousin really bothered me for the entire book, in that it was, and I don't really know how to, to approach this discussion because I'm not. A polytheist. I don't spend my days thinking about the Greek gods, the Roman gods, Norse gods, but it, to me, and like I know that the Greeks and the, the Norse people were out here worshipping their deities at the same time. They had civilization going on at similar times or whatever. But for them to like literally exist and like manifest themselves in our reality it felt a little like this needed to be walled off. It just felt a little, it felt a little strange. And it felt like it was an odd choice then for this to be about Norse gods when your cousin is literally the daughter of a Greek god. It, it just felt, it just, I don't know. I feel, <laughs> I would really love to know what was going, like when, um, at the beginning of the book, when Magnus is talking to, I think her name was Rey, some goddess of something or other, she was out there in the ocean. I was like, so can she just like have lunch with Poseidon, like, or some other minor ocean deity? Like, can that, like, is that like a thing? Like, do the Norse gods like interact with the the Greek ones? 
but you know, like they like it just felt weird i think that's a really that was my major issue with this book was that it was set in the same world with a direct relationship and it just i wasn't expecting that going in i was expecting a fully walled off separate universe and so for this to be part of a shared universe i don't know if i appreciate that i did appreciate all of the diversity so i, I don't want to say that like magnus chase is like the first diverse book that he ever had it's not but i did appreciate it more in magnus chase than i appreciated it when i was reading the heroes of olympus when i was reading the heroes of olympus i don't really think that like it really i didn't i don't know i didn't really feel it i guess which is again a stupid thing to say but when i was reading i'm like mm, i don't I don't know, I think that there were just moments in, the, in Magnus Chase where the character Sam, she was a Muslim who wears a hijab, and it was like, she's a Valkyrie in the book, and like her hijab was like part of her weaponry. I thought that was actually really an interesting, that she was like, yeah, they give us all this magical scarf, and I was like, bitch, that's my new hijab, and it has all this magical properties, and I was like, you know what, Sam? That's really smart, and I wouldn't have thought to use it like that, you know, because I'm not a a Muslim woman who wears a hijab but I thought that was really interesting I can't speak to there were a lot of aspects of Sam's character where I was like I don't really know if this is how you want to write this Mr. Ryordan but I'm also not a Middle Eastern Muslim woman so I'm not going to critique this there was also a character in the book who communicates through American Sign Language which I thought was really interesting because I haven't none of the books I've read this year have done that and I don't think there was really a children's book when I was growing up that had a main character doing American Sign Language, at least not one that is as readily available or as hyped as Rick Riordan's novels, so appreciated that. But on a story front, I really appreciated that one, this is the first book in a trilogy, because I really don't think that Miss Riordan needs to be writing five book series, but what I in saying that this had a definite beginning middle and end and you could read the sort of summer and appreciate the sort of summer and not pick up the hammer of thor i haven't picked this one up yet i just, i i was like you know i'm probably gonna continue with this in, in the month of december so i did grab it but if you read the sort of summer and you were like not in a position to be able to immediately grab the second one i don't think you would feel like you ended things on a cliffhanger now there are definite moments in this book that set up a potential sequel and it's rick riordan so that was another thing about it being a shared universe i was like you had all these instances when the world is about to end twice twice with the titans coming back in the original trilogy i mean in the original five book series and then the heroes of olympus again the world is ending and the Norse people were just out here doing nothing. Also, the Norse kids, the children of Norse gods, have it so much easier. Because they're like, sure, they might be attacked by monsters. But they're not terrorized the way that the Greek and Roman kids are. I thought that was very unfair. Side note, side tangent. But <laughs> the sort of summer, it has a, a, a completely, it tells a complete story. It tells a complete arc in it. And it functions functionally. That's that was a stupid sentence it functions or it can function as a standalone novel so you can appreciate it and not really feel compelled to move on but i feel like if you do move on you'll be rewarded and i think that rick riordan i think trilogies are his sweet spot <laughs> i think they are because here's the olympus dragged and i don't foresee the same issue here and obviously you know Rick Riordan he's written so many more books by the time he published this one he has a lot more experience so that has to play into it I think he's really dug in and figured out the archetypes that he likes to play with and he definitely has a certain style um but I don't really think that I wouldn't hold that against him I think that if you read any author that has written like 12 plus books you kind of understand how they approach things and so I it didn't bother me that it was I don't want to say reminiscent of the Heroes of Olympus or Percy Jackson but and again if it's meant to be in the same universe you would expect there to be some overlays it's like when you watch a Marvel movie they're all directed by different people but you expect a similar tone in all of them because Kevin Feige is like a fascist dictator and so they're going to have the same they're gonna have the same tone and so I think that's a little strange to like walk into a book series. I thought I'm only bringing this up because there were some uh, Goodreads reviews where people were like it felt derivative of Percy Jackson or it felt like a blatant copy. 
and it's like it's in the same universe these are you know it's not like Rick Riordan has like 12 different teen, teenage boys he, he writes he writes like five teenage boys and they're all a little bit different and is Magnus a little bit like Percy kind of but I don't think so not in any kind of they're the same person way I think that they would definitely get along with each other but I also think that they also function in in sort of similar tropish areas not as like the chosen one per se because neither one of them can do everything on their own but they're both special people in their respective stories and I think that that's because of that function that they serve just by the nature of the trope he's using with them they're going to be a little bit similar and so I do think I'm going to continue on with this one I am going to continue on with the trilogy but I appreciated the Sword of Summer I think that if you've appreciated the Percy Jackson books and you will appreciate this one um I don't know like I think that this is a fine place to start like it, it's connected to the Percy Jackson universe it doesn't spoil anything that happens in the Percy Jackson universe but I think that it has the potential to just by where it's set you know because uh, if Magnus is 16 Annabeth's cousin is like roughly the same age and so just by the very nature of that I think that if they were to interact in any kind of meaningful way there could be a potential for spoilers there but overall I think I gave Magnus Chase uh and the gods of Asgard the sort of summer book one four stars I think I could be completely wrong but I think I gave it four stars if not three because I did enjoy it it's a fun read I think that it it I think it the implications of the world are really what bother me the most and I really struggle to wrap my head around that so I'd really love to have a conversation on that in the comment section because I don't I think it's just because I'm not a practicing polytheist person like this idea of them all like them all like it, it just it pushes it to a place where I can't like my brain just cannot go there so and I don't think that's like a, a thing to really hold against the book. I think that, you know, that's just a personal taste thing. Um, but yeah, I liked Magnus. I liked Sam. The two companions, the elf and the dwarf. Um, I thought they were great. I thought they were interesting characters. I don't really feel like I have much more to add. I don't really want to talk about the quest. I, there were definitely a lot of twists and turns along the way. Some of which I appreciated, some of which I didn't. There was definitely a lot of stops. There was a lot that happened in this first book. It's almost 500 pages. But I feel like it worked. I feel like even in the parts that I didn't really love, it never felt slow or dragging, and none of the stops felt like filler. So I'll leave a link down below in the description to my review on Goodreads, which I think summarizes my thoughts much better than this ever did. Um, so thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again soon with another video. But until then, and until next time, bye.